Whenever you're ready. Okay. Okay. When I some of the names are a little bit hard, but you help me. Okay, we're gonna start with Matthew chapter 10, Matit Yaku. And when he called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of diseases. Now, the names of the 12 apostles are these first Simeon, who is called Peter, Kappa, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, Z- no, sorry about that, Zebedee, right? And John, his brother, which we call Yahukanan, Philip, and Bartholomew, Th- Th- can you say that name, please? Bartholomew, I can't say it. Uh, Bartholomew. Thank you. It just won't come out altogether. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, the son of. Uh, uh, I, wouldn't, I don't want to chop that name up. How do you say the next two names? Oh, uh, so that would be Yaakov Bar Hafi and Levi, who was called Tadi. Wow. Okay. Simon the Canaanite and Judas also betrayed him. Okay. The 12th, Yahushua sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles. That's the northern. Do not into a city of the Samaritans. Samaritans. I mean, the Samaritans. I said that earlier, don't I? But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Yasserel. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of the Shemayahims is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely you give. Provide neither gold nor silver, nor copper in your money belts, nor bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor staff. For a worker is worthy of his food. Now, whatever city or town you enter, inquire who is it. Inquire in it who. I'm sorry. Inquire who in is worthy, and stay there until you go out. And when you go into the house, greet it. Hallelujah. If the household is worthy, let your peace, shalom, come upon it. But if it's not worthy, let your shalom return to you. And whoever will not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart from that house or city, shake the dust off your feet. Hallelujah. We know what to do. Okay. Okay. As surely I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the days of judgment than for the city. Wow. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Be aware of men, <clears throat> for they will deliver you up into the, up into council and scourge scourge you 
in their synagogues. And you will be brought before governors and kings for my name, for my sake. And as a testimony unto them and to the Gentiles. Uh, but when they deliver you up, do not worry. Worry about how you or what you should speak. For it will be given to you in that hour what you shall speak. Hmm. For it is not you who speaks, but it is the Ruach of the Father who will speak through you. Now, brother, brother will deliver a brother unto death, and a father his child, and a child will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. Oh, Abba. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Hallelujah. But when they persecute you in this city, flee to another. For surely I say to you, you will not have gone through the city of Yasserah before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is he enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. If they have called you the master of the house, Beelzebub, how much more will they call those of his household? Therefore, do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. Hallelujah. Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. And when you hear the when when you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather feel hear, fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. That, that's probably a different word, huh? Are there not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But every hair of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than any many sparrows. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my father, who is in the Shemaiah Ames. Do not think that I came to bring shalom on this earth. I did not come to bring shalom, but a sword. A man against his father and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law. I, ouch, against a mother-in-law. Mm. And a man, his foe will be those own. <laughs> he who loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Wow, Yahuwah. That's right. And he who does not take his stake and follow me is not worthy of me. And he who finds life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. He who receives you receives me. Hallelujah. And he who receives me, him, who sent you, 
who, who sent me. I'm sorry, let me read that over. He who receives, he who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives him. Hallelujah. Who sent him? Sent me. You know, that that's powerful right there. That's really yes, full yes. of dynamite. Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. And he he who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of righteousness, man shall receive righteous man reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cold water in the name of a disciple, assuredly, I say to you, he shall be no by no means lose his reward, and he shall by no means lose, lose his reward. Hallelujah. Boy, that is a powerful chapter. Yes, there it was, is. Yes, it is. I didn't even get that. I was writing down. I, I, so much came to my mind. But in the beginning, he said about the kingdom. Okay, so... Uh, what did it say about the kingdom? Uh, um, was it there the kingdom? You know what? Live. What is the kingdom? Let me see. Let me see. Was I right? Um, let me see. No, maybe it was this chapter before. Okay, it was a chapter before, I think. But isn't that something? How he tells us who we're going to go after. How he told them what type of healing they were going to do and how to cast out the yeah. unclean spirits, you know. So, I mean, I look at this kind of stuff, and, you know, he says that somewhere in the word that we will do greater things than these guys did, you know, right? Doesn't it say that? Yeah. <laughs> The um, yeah, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I know that. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, not... there it is. yeah, 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 yeah. I know it's somewhere, but on, on verse seven, it says, And you go preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. What does that entail? I believe that was, um, he was trying to show them that um, he that, a, that he was he was trying to show them just a taste of what the kingdom was going to be, where we were going to be able to do these things in the kingdom with the with Yahuwah's full power. Right. Um, so I obviously I'm not denying that we can do it today, but when you see his whole ministry, his whole ministry, he was giving the the disciples. He was giving them a super abounding power of the Ruach that we don't really see today. Um, not to say that we can't cast out that, right. day, but you, you don't see it in a such a, uh, the numbers that you were seeing it in the book of Acts. You don't see that today. It's very rare. It's not as, and the reason I believe this is because um that that he was showing a taste of the millennium basically so to say that heaven the kingdom of heaven has come near to you he's not saying that they're already in the kingdom what he's saying is that right. he's given them a taste of the kingdom you'll see later in matthew or john i believe where he says none of you will take death until you see the kingdom but what happens in the next chapter they see the transfiguration the transfiguration is a taste of the resurrection so it's a taste of the kingdom wow. Um, yeah. you know, so, so that's wow. what I, that's what I was, you know, you know understand that whole yeah, abortion. cause a lot of people like take that phrase, the kingdom of heaven has come to you almost to extreme literal. And then that's where you get the kingdom now theology and that they were already in the millennium, yeah. you know, and that he was reigning somehow from heaven in the millennium and yada, yada, yada. The problem yeah. is, is that the millennium comes after his second coming. The kingdom doesn't come until. He returns so you know yeah. realistically you can't be physically in the kingdom until he comes back 
So, um, you know, so obviously he's talking about a spiritual aspect. He's talking about um, a, a, a taste of it. He gave them a taste of it with them casting out demons, with them healing lepers. Um, I did also want to talk about verse 28, sis. Um, and it's not really the King James's fault alone. Most translators have this as L. It's not supposed to be L here. It's supposed to be Gehenna. Because um, obviously people don't die. In oh, yeah. Like, you're, you're, to be, it makes no sense to put hell there because hell is not where you're being destroyed. Hell is not the second death. The second death is the lake of fire. So that's my So Yahusha was just yeah. basically saying, Don't fear man you in this life. That. You need yeah. to be fearing Yahuwah who can right. kill you in the lake right. of fire. Yes. That's what he's saying. So so uh, and this goes right. back to the conversation we were having earlier off the record about the truth about what happens ap- after death. What Yahusha is referring to here, this doesn't happen until the white throne judgment verse 28 that doesn't happen until you're judged and given your sentence so you you know that that doesn't happen when you die you're 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 in in the ground when you die you're in you're in the grave when you die you're in you're in sheol when you die so uh, obviously he's talking about after you die and then you're 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 judged um so he's saying you know fear the judge basically is what he's saying you need to fear who can throw you in the lake of fire and then you mm-hmm. cease to exist because you're dead. Um, you know, to destroy, it even says here, to destroy soul and body doesn't say forever torment. So again, if we look at scripture as a whole, he's he's even telling us here in this isolated verse that you don't burn forever in Gehenna. It says it right here, to destroy body and soul. If, you're, if your soul is being destroyed, you cease to exist. You know, part of your soul is your Ruach. So if you're... If you're being destroyed in 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 the lake of fire, then you can't burn forever. So anyway, but but yeah, that's that's uh what it's saying right there. Yeah, I thought that um, was. Yeah, yeah. That's so pretty good. Um, I also like the fact that this chapter talks a lot about what some of us struggle with our family, um, putting our family oh, yeah. before him at times. This shows us that we got to constantly guard our thoughts, constantly got to be worried about, you know, is, is our family members telling us to do something that's breaking you who is Torah? I would say the Sabbath is one of the biggest stumbling blocks when dealing with unbelieving family members. I know it from experience. I've dealt with it with my own um, my own dad wanting to take me to a ball game on the Sabbath. Um you know, I, I've had to say no to him and I felt bad about it, but at, looking back, it was the right thing to do. Um, so, you know, sometimes we got to make the hard decisions and put you up before our family. So it, it, it's, it's a very hard thing to have to do, but to follow him, you have to put him number one in your life. Um, and I think that's why Paul says to some of us men, you, maybe you're not meant to have a wife because if you can't balance your family life with you who are being number one all the time, uh, you're maybe not meant to have a wife because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, or we're not ready at that moment. Because if, say, if I have a wife right now and I have children and all that, I'm struggling to support them, but I can't put you first and never work on the Sabbath. Maybe I shouldn't have a wife right now. You know what I'm saying? So that that's that's the thing is that, when Paul's talking about it, he's not making it like a verbatim, you have to not get married. I know the Catholics take it that way, but, um, you know, with the priesthood and all that, but yeah, Paul is not saying you have to not get married. What he's saying is that I will, my opinion, I will, my will, that some of you wouldn't get married because, you know, obviously some of us men are not ready. For it. <laughs> some of us men need time to grow in the word and, and become more mature in the word before handling a wife. Because really, really, when you get a wife, you're technically her teacher. You're, you're in essence, like an individual Levite to her. It, essentially, you're supposed to teach her doctrine. Yeah. Essentially, you're right. supposed to be, you know what I'm saying? I know Shoshana knows what I'm saying. So, you know, this this is a scriptural concept that we as a, rest, a Western theological greco-roman mindset don't understand 
we as men are supposed to be like priests in our households. So if you don't know enough of his word and haven't been mature enough in his word to be on the meat, you really shouldn't have a wife. I'm just saying that it comes, there's things that we need to prioritize as men and knowing you who are putting him number one in our lives before getting a wife is that's the first thing. So that's what Paul is saying in context. Um, you know, so and Paul was pretty young. Yeah. And um that he wasn't gonna Dennis, do that. You know, Dennis he, and I he both. was not some old geezer. He yeah. was he was a young man um, in his mind mm-hmm. when he was first called. I don't know if you hear me. Yeah, I can hear you, Shoshana. Um Dennis and I both have decided that we're not even going to look for a mate at this point until Yahweh mm-hmm. takes us out because only mm-hmm. people he's going to be working with are those whom he counts worthy. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's when we'll look for the right person. Yeah. 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 I mean sis, I I've I'm honest, I don't desire it. I don't I to. feel like you who has made me like Paul. I just I don't desire it. Mm-hmm. I and it's nothing against the sisters in you who of my generation. I just don't desire it. I don't I don't feel an urge for it at all to be married. I don't then, mm-hmm. I just don't by looking for it after he takes you out, like when he counts you worthy as the 144, then look for it. Is it am I missing something? That's what Dennis and I have decided. If if we're counted worthy. We know that nobody's going to be there that's not counted worthy. You and won't be taking wives and husbands as the 144. Am I wrong on that? Yeah, like... Do what? Yeah. No, what Brother was Josh was not trying to shoot you down, sis. He's just mentioning that when you become 144,000, I don't, I don't know if that's smart to be worried about even picking a life partner at that point because... Once, once he comes back, you're, that's when the um, transformation happens for the 144,000. So you wouldn't even be oh. able, to, yeah, you kind of. But, but we're, we're going to the wilderness. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. You're going to the wilderness, but you're, that's only that's for That's what I'm talking years. about. Going, you know, going to I'm the wilderness. Saying, like, in, it, you could, I'm not, I'm not trying to shoot you down. I'm just saying that. That's only for three and a half years, and then his return comes, and then you're right. Gonna be, you know, there's gonna be it, no as a woman female. alone in the so, wilderness. It it won't be any. It won't be a very easy life. Yeah. And at that point, I would choose to be married. Yeah. But right now, I'm I'm choosing never again to go yeah. through what I went through. Yeah. By it. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think I think society has put that stupid mindset in us that we need someone. We always need someone. Mm-hmm. Um, I I think I think it's I think it's the conditioning of 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 civilization or society that's made us think that everyone needs to be married. Um, when there's many people <laughs> in scripture that we're not married and we're happy. So, um, go ahead, mom. I just wanted to give a short yeah. little testimony on this subject because this is something that I have dealt very much mm-hmm. with with uh, Yahusha since I've I've come to the truth. Um, I feel for me, okay, I'm 61, all right, yeah. but I have a lot of problems. I realize, believe me, I'm not trying to be funny here. No man deserves to have to be with me. In all honesty. I mean, I, I can't sleep normal. I'm constantly moving in my bed. I, you know, there, I cannot, I cannot put it in my head that someone would deserve to have to deal with all my problems. But what I do realize from the wisdom that Yahushua has been so generous to, to give me is that, you know, something I probably never really was able to be with the one if he had one for me that he wanted me to be with I ruined it for myself because when I became the age where I really was looking 
for a man, I that was the point that I was going my own way. And I was doing it my way. I never even prayed about it, I am mm-hmm. ashamed to yep. say. And, you know, the way I see it now is that mm-hmm. Yahusha is so real to me every day. I never feel alone. Honestly, I can say that. I never feel I don't get depressed anymore. I used to get depressed. Mm -hmm. I don't get depressed anymore. Um, I actually crave a couple of minutes a day where I'm completely alone so that I can have that time on my knees and and in praise and worship. Um, But truly, I know that I've wrecked it for myself. I, I do know that. I know that he may have had somebody really wonderful for me, but, um, but I was not, I did not have ears to hear. I was not being obedient. And so I basically did it to myself. And that's the way I look at it. Um, you know, I, I, I really don't think, I really don't think he's, he's got it in his mind to bring mm-hmm. anybody into my life. I, I really do not. I can relate. That's oh, where I, 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 go mm-hmm. ahead. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I was just gonna say I can relate. Like it's been a long time since I felt not a long time, like maybe two years since it, but I it's been a while since I felt alone, felt depressed. Like my my joy, like my my everything comes from yeah. prayer, comes from worship, comes from being in his word. Uh, so I'm right where you're at. Yeah, yeah. Right I, now, I feel the same way. <laughs> yes, and I can, uh, uh, I can attest too that even being married, um, like uh, me and my husband, we have a, a relationship that's different, definitely. And um, you know, um, I am married to him because that's what I did. But, um, I don't, how do you say, I appreciate all that he does for me. You know, um, I have to take uh, bad with the good. And, um, you know, I think uh, we're um, what you call good compatible, like not good compatible, but compatible with each other, where we respect, where we honor each other to the fact that, you know, we don't look any other way, but we do our thing. He allows yeah. me to love Yahuwah with all my heart and spend my time with Yahuwah. He knows what I do. And I, I that's my full satisfaction. And um, there's nothing like, you know, spending time with Yahuwah. And I also enjoy the gifts that the Father has given me, which are my children and my great-grandchildren, grandchildren. Um, it, it's a pleasure, but... You know, um, and I'm going to speak to, you know, you young fellas and have somebody and, and those that got married because, you know, they got married. If you're a young father, young mother, um, or, it is a job. Um, it is it is not something because you want to satisfy your needs. Men, you're responsible for your women. You're responsible to teach your children about Yahuwah. Um, they shouldn't have to go hear it from somebody else. They should be learning from you. And the women should be uplifting their husband, making that time available to their husband, having their children teaching those children to sit around their father's feet to listen to their father teach them about the word. And that's what's very important. It takes a team. You want to raise your children to know who Yahuwah is. Then you learn how to treat your women. Your women, you need to learn how to treat your men because your children will imitate everything that you do. And for, you know, young men, you single, you single women, it's not, you know, I mean, nice to have a man, but you better find one that loves you who are more than he'll love you. That's right. Because him loving you who are, he will honor and respect you. If they don't love it and it's, and it's all about 
because you have got to satisfy your own you know, uh, mental mind that you need to have somebody. You don't. We don't. And I could see where Shaul is okay because we have a, we can get lost in the word. We can get lost in you know uh, witnessing to somebody, helping somebody see the way. I mean, that's more gratifying than anything there is. It's for someone to come to know who our Savior is. Coming to know what our Heavenly Father that loved us so much, what he did for us, that's more important than anything in the world. And that's where, you know, we got to see that difference. You know, when you're already in a relationship and you, like, I can speak to my grandson, I, I think he's still here, um, that he is the head of his house. And he's the one that needs to sit his daughters down and say, you know, uh, you know, just talk to him about your love. Even mentioning their names, your babies, I'll tell you that they know your name already. And they get excited. They, they know a couple songs. And that is very good. You got to pour into them and you got to, you know, however they speak is whatever they've been taught. So if you teach them about the law, they will follow. And the wife is obey your husband, obey, you know, teach your children to obey your word so that when dad comes home or dad's around, the children will obey their father. They don't, they, they will listen because, and this goes for any of you young men wanting to have babies. If you don't raise your children right, right, I mean, then you'll have to spank them. You'll have to discipline them. But if you teach them that it's natural to obey, then they will obey. But it's a, it's a very big responsibility to have children. I learned that now. I was a single parent. Nobody gave me no manual. But I did use Jane Thompson to help me out a bit uh, because that's what we had in that time. But it is a very big responsibility. You don't want your children to be wild. You want them to know Yehoah. You want them to know the laws of land. The honor, teaching them the commandments so that they know it, so that it's in their heart, embedded from their grown and they too will find a way in you because you have a way in that and uh, you know don't don't guys don't look for somebody who's not walking in you don't look for somebody that says oh i'll go to church with you no 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 they have to be in love with you or don't waste your time don't wait and you know what Listen, listen, when the fathers know, you better listen, because you'll avoid a lot of trouble. You'll avoid a lot of heartache. Unless Trust you me, meet someone you like will. I met, who yeah. pretended to love Yahuwah, who pretended to be so in, in love with Yahuwah that he knew the scriptures so well that... I thought he could teach me. I anyway, and I I've, I've heard you that know, there are quite a few of these around. That's why you um, gotta be careful yes. about wolves. That's why, honestly, um, yeah. starting with a new rule in this assembly, and I think I, me and brother Joshua talked about it off the record a couple of times. That really it's nothing personal, but new people coming into this assembly like we need to know the whole story if you've been kicked out of the assembly why have you been kicked out because that in essence not to be mean like i said but in essence we need to guard ourselves um we need to guard ourselves against wolves because most of the time a wolf doesn't get kicked out of one assembly um right gets kicked out of like that particular person that she's referring to got kicked out probably of like 10 assemblies in their yeah. life. So, so, you know, it, it, it's a repeated pattern. There's and, a and also, leopard doesn't, doesn't change its spots. So, no. a leopard and you doesn't know what? 
also, brother, with that, yeah. is yeah. that wisdom, That's wisdom true. is listening. Dennis. Yeah, well, like, um, you don't do... Sometimes people get kicked out for doing something right. And that did happen to Dennis and I. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? Remember the word said to seek counsel. When you seek counsel, when somebody, wisdom is listening and doing, whether you like it and obedience, because Abba will put people before you to tell you, watch what you're doing. And you know that conviction. I'm sure you have felt that, um, Shushana, when you know, a person came, because we can turn around and ignore everybody that says, don't go down the path. When they break the first sign, that's your, that is your witness right there. When they, they can bend it for their own personal gain, then that's where you wake up all, all, all of it. Now, I'm not just speaking, uh, to, I'm talking to all of it. When somebody comes and says, don't go down that path, break off well, that path. Wisdom what happened to me is, 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 is this, this man did not let on at all until well after we had been married that he was not who he had pretended to be. Um, I didn't yeah. find out until he actually okay. took took another wife. Oh, you know, while I, while I was okay, still you know what? To me. Yes, Shushana, you look at it like this. If you were to instruct a woman going through what you went through, think about the first sign that you were given even before he came to meet you. Those are the things we cannot forget. Those are the things that are called wisdom yeah, to teach right. our younger daughters, our younger sisters, what not to get into. Because that's wisdom. You had to go through the lesson, of course. But now you got it. Now your words are more valuable. Too bad you had to get hurt the way you did. But yeah. that's wisdom. Now you realize it. But at first, the enemy is so conniving. He is such a smooth talker, smooth mover that he will use and get exactly when you're weak. And he will make it but you got to remember. Uh, Brother Josh had his hand up for a while. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. Oh, okay, go ahead. So, uh, I wanted to speak on my own Touching on my own personal experiences, um, I know that you know I don't I don't desire a wife personally anymore. Um, there's still a bit of the flesh that rises up, and you know, but deep in my spirit, um, it's not what I desire anymore. Um, but you know, two years ago, I can't can't say that. Um, you know, anytime there would be a female that would come on uh, whatever group that I was in. Um, my mind would immediately jump to, oh, there's a possible wife. Um, even uh, apparently it was looking at the flesh um, more than anything that I saw in the spirit because it was, you know, um, it only took one time for her to be on the group. Um, so that's, that's one thing. Um, another thing is that um, even when I would talk to a female, you know, um, there were very clear, it was very clear that even though I couldn't see those character defects in them at the same time, um, I couldn't see the character defects in me, you know, until later on. Um, there was a lot of character defects, things that Yokua needed to be dealt with. I think the very last person that I was, uh, that I was talking with, um, was a, uh, a sister named Jacqueline, um, and, um, and, I was talking with her for a little bit and then uh, around the time of the 
I think it was Pasak that was coming up. Might have been Sukut, I don't remember. But um, we had told each other that if, if it was, you know, Yahuwah's will um, for us to move that any further, that, you know, he would, he would let us know. But for the time being, um, to, to spend time with him <clears throat> first in the coming and that coming feast day, um, we weren't going to talk talk to each other for a while. We we're just going to spend time with Abba and seek His face in prayer and in fasting. Um, that being said, she was unable to do so. She wouldn't text back, but then it was just it exploded, and I I didn't even realize she was texting because I, you know, I was true to my word. I wasn't going to. Um, pay any attention i was going to put everything that i had into abba um but it it showed me that she was carrying that um she was seeking comfort in something else other than uh than yahuwah um even though i was able to refrain from that character defect in myself i know that i saw it later on he allowed me to see it in myself even though you know at that time i was refraining myself from it um it showed me that she had that character defect i had that character defect um and if you haven't dealt with those things in your life if you haven't dealt with whatever character defect like the character defect that i used to always um really doubt my salvation um you have to have those things dealt with you have to have yourself you know fully submitted to Yahuwah and able to stand when um, because he's going to attack you through your wife. Uh, If you have a wife, he's going to attack you through her. So if you can't stand um, fully and firmly when the enemy comes against you, um, then he's going to tear you apart. Um, You have to be able to stand not only for yourself, but you have to be able to stand when he attacks her as well. Um, not so it's more than just um, like you know sister Sophia said it's a job um, you have to support her you have more right well that's in the, the spiritual as well you have to be able to get on your knees fast and pray when she's under spiritual demonic attack when your kids are under spiritual demonic attack fast and pray however long that takes um, for that affliction to be removed um, you know and I know that for myself because I struggle in doing that for myself. I have no business taking a walk. But yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's maturity. Yeah. I think what Brother Josh was saying and kind of what I was saying too was it's all about maturity. It's about we need to be men before we try to take a wife. That's right. Um and uh I was talking to a brother the other night about this, too. We need to be a man. Like Yahuwah says to Job, are you stand yeah. up, be, be a man. So if, if we're not even ready to do that, we definitely have no business uh, getting a wife and getting children. You, don't <laughs> we need, need, you know, we need to mature. Yep, go ahead, brother. Sorry, I was just going to say, and there's really no one that can teach you how to do that. Only Abba can teach you that, and only Abba can grow you up. And that doesn't happen overnight. It, it takes a long time with him just working with you, some faster than others. Um, I don't think anyone can really teach you that. It's just Yeah, um, scripturally, yeah. I would say secularly, to be a man that's supposed to be taught by your father. Um Back in the day, I would say in the 30s and 40s, they still did it not to be effeminate, not to be uh, not to be uh, acting like a woman. Unfortunately, today, that's a lost art. Unfortunately, today, society trains us guys to act like women. Um, Yeah, go ahead, brother. Maybe in the 30s and 40s, they would have taught the physical aspect of it, but I don't think they were teaching the spiritual aspect of it. Yeah, that's what I Yeah. Exactly. That's what I meant by secular. Yeah, the secular understanding would be physically like being strong, standing up, um, you know, you know, being brave. Oh, supporting being your family. Secular. 
Yes, uh, you know, you know. brave, standing up for your family, um, dressing like a man. You know, all you guys out there that love your uh, little tight, skinny jeans, stop doing that. Okay. So, you know, th this is the problem is that we're raised in this society, especially in the 90s. If you're born from the 90s on, you're, you're raised to think it's okay for men to act like women. Not, no, it's not. At least that's something they got right in the worldly society back in the 30s and 40s. They did get that right, even though it's the world. They did get that right. Men dress like men. Women dress like women. Um, you know, men would not put wake up makeup on. In my opinion, the 70s, the, I would say the 60s and 70s was the start of the decline. Yeah. Starting to effeminize men. Mm -hmm. doesn't help that all the artists were doing it doesn't help that white snake and you know all these rock stars would be wearing makeup mm -hmm. i mean uh you know it doesn't help that all these artists would start wearing skinny jeans a guy wearing skinny jeans you know it doesn't help you know that that they literally will dress and act like women they were literally you know you'll see guys have the time wearing you know Cross dressing, I forget when did that happen in this country, mom? When did that start? Seventies, oh, eighties? Gosh, seventies because we had yeah, we had Slip Wilson, you know, Stupid. becoming whatever her name was. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, it started in the sixties going into the seventies. So, you know, back back early in this country's history, you know, you know, I get it, it's a Freemason founded country, but at least for the most part, the Protestant reformers that came over here, the Puritans that came over here, they dressed like men. They were not dressing like women. They were not acting like women. Um, so um, I see Brother Ray asked me a question here in the chat. What do you mean acting like a woman? Okay, so let me explain even on a secular concept. Being, I would say being a little too emotional is acting like a woman where women are naturally emotional creatures, right? Men, we're a little bit, we're, we're, Yahuwah made us to be a little bit more thick skinned, in my opinion. We're supposed to be thick skinned. We're supposed to not be offended by every little comment. I see in this millennial generation I'm talking about right now, like this modern generation right now, like almost in every way, boys are raised to act like girls. They're mm -hmm. being groomed. They're, yeah. They're being groomed to act like women. Um, that's number one problem. Even, even with like what I mean by emotional, bro, I would mean by me making a sarcastic comment and uh, at someone and they already get defensive, like within a second. Like, you know, us men are supposed to be, like I said, a little bit more thick skinned. We're supposed to be able to take a joke better than a woman. Um, we're supposed to be able to, you know, like not get overly sensitive to things women are sensitive beings that's how they're made they got they got um what's the hormone mom estrogen. estrogen women have a lot more estrogen so they're supposed to be a lot more emotional yeah. us men barely have any estrogen in our bodies at all so we're not supposed to be that emotional what happens is we're raised yeah to think that oh we got to touching our feminine side no nah, no nah, cut that out that 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 that's part of the problem that is part of that's part of the problem society brainwashes you brainwashes you to to be like that that's one thing my dad even though he had a catholic upbringing i could say this with utmost confidence he was trying his best to raise me secularly wise physically wise to be a real man right mm -hmm. um he would never let me wear no girl shoes at five years old i can tell you right now oh, no. he would smack me back in the dang head you know like, what are you doing don't be putting your sister's shoes on so many families today are not doing this. So many families. I'm not trying to poke the finger, but at the same time, Great so many point. families are, are allowing point. this. It's not cute. It's not Oh, cute. the children, let them decide no, themselves. No, no, no. 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 You teach that. Show me where in the Bible where you who it says they can mm -hmm. choose for themselves. No, they don't choose their gender for themselves. No, they don't. So the, uh, enough of this political correctness nonsense. That's part of the problem is that we've allowed heathen governments mm -hmm. to brainwash us to think it's mean to tell a child you are a boy acts like a boy right that's almost abuse today you know you do that. um go ahead brother joshua i think there's more more to play than, uh 
raised in a society that's not, you know, that teaches you to be effeminate. There's more that feeds into uh, men being overly emotional. Um, I, I don't know what it would be for others' cases because um, I wasn't raised effeminate. Um, I grew up with my mom and my dad. Um, for me, I would definitely say there was a lot more. Um, I was on psych on psychotropic drugs um, my whole life. I was on Adderall my whole life. Um, so I was either numb from the Ritalin or I was um, overly emotional, um, bipolar manic. Um, and then getting off of that, it was on street drugs. Um, so I would say for me, it was drugs on top of spirits, on top of witchcraft and having my body completely depleted of any dopamine, any serotonin, anything that's supposed to, that would regulate your, um, you know, regulate those things. Um, I mean, cause there, there is, I understand the spiritual aspect, but I also understand the physical aspect. Um, uh, dopamine, serotonin, no epinephrine, epinephrine, um, testosterone, all that stuff is going to regulate, you know, it either goes up or down one of them, um, depending on, which emotion that you're dealing with and when drugs that you've taken have completely fried those receptors um, to the point where your body can't even regulate that as it's supposed to it's going to make you a little bit more emotional than somebody else uh, yeah yeah i agree um also the foods part of it um i know for a fact now today they're doing it i don't know if they did it back in the 80s and 90s but now today with beyond meat Tons of estrogen are be, being put in the Beyond Burgers and Beyond Meat. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. You have vaccines. Estrogen are being put in vaccines, supposedly. So they're also men unknowingly are being... Um, yeah. uh, estrogen is being put into boys and men's bodies without them knowing it. Um you know, that could be part of it, too, that genetically you're being given stuff you're not supposed to be given. Mm -hmm. You who have made us not to have a lot of estrogen. So yep. say you're taking a vaccine thinking it's going to cure you of something and you don't know estrogens in that vaccine. That's extra estrogen mm -hmm. being put into your body genetically. Mm -hmm. That's making you act like a woman. And you'll see that with certain drugs like they made they used to make jokes about it right mom on like the martin lawrence show and all that mm -hmm. where there was one episode where the guy was acting like a woman and talking about my you know my pecs are tender or whatever it, it, they used to make jokes about it in the 90s but it's true like you take certain drugs mm -hmm. like joshua was saying and even foods technically that yeah that you can easily find out if there's estrogen being put in stuff like that you know you can call them and ask them what's what's in it you know, um, they're, they're literally putting extra estrogen in a man that's not supposed to have that amount of estrogen in their bodies. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, would be, would be so the reason that estrogen is because it's, uh, it's soybean, like 98% of soybean that exists today has been genetically corrupted, um, in order to withstand high doses of, uh, Roundup. Spray, Monsanto's Roundup spray. Uh, so that's any. I'm not even sure if the organic kind hasn't been tainted with that because most of the time when you buy organic, um, you'll buy it. most of the farms that sell organic will also sell uh, non-organic as well. So the fact that they're spraying their soy with Roundup and that it's been modified to withstand that. Um, that roundup is going to leak off into the rest of the rest of it as well. Um, so it's, I'm, I'm not even sure that we should be trusting like the organic soy um, when it's only like 2% that hasn't been uh, modified. Um, but yeah, the, the, that's, that's one of the reasons if you're eating soy, I wouldn't be eating soy anymore. Yeah, I think a lot of us have ate soy at, at one point in time. We, uh, I used to drink soy milk back in the day. Don't do it anymore. Um, I used to drink the silk soy milk, but then I started finding out that 
certain companies won't update their labels when it comes to non-GMO and silk was being uh, bought up, bought out by a major corporation. So they were starting to um, not be as ethical with their labeling. So uh, I just gave up on soy altogether. I don't, I don't yeah. intake soy. Just the fact that there's a danger of estrogen being put in the soy that way. I, nah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'll, I'll eat something else. I'm, I'm all right. You know, so, but, um, the soy, yeah. it's just, um, it's that it's been genetically corrupted to where it, uh, when you eat it, it just produces higher level of estrogen. It's so I'm not even sure if you would call it soy anymore. Yeah. Um, it's the same yeah. thing with wheat. Wheat is really not, there's like maybe 25% of wheat that is still wheat, but about 75% of wheat has been corrupted to the point where the, the, the DNA markers of it, whatever you call it, the genomes or whatever you want to call it, um, I don't know the terminology, but it doesn't resemble what wheat was 20 years ago. Um, it actually hits your body. Um, when, you, when you partake, of, when you eat wheat, um, it does the same thing as like white sugar. It shoots your blood sugar straight up and then it comes straight back down, which natural wheat, real wheat wouldn't do that. Um, yeah. But it's very hard to even find that. Um, you have to yeah. know specifically what, what brand you what type of wheat. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely sketchy. Um, I just know that I know the estrogen thing is pretty well known about the um, fake meat, stuff like that. So I definitely would recommend people not. Uh, if you want to get a burger, get a real burger, get a real, yeah. get real meat, um, get real beef, get real chicken, turkey, whatever. But wasting your time getting fake meat is pointless in my opinion completely pointless it you're actually doing more harm to your body than than, than to um doing that um go ahead brother ray after you i think we're gonna close the uh recording out for the day go ahead um well i was gonna say like um two things i guess um like i heard that bill gates is buying a bunch of farms so they can make everything like gmo and then the second thing i was gonna say is with the real meat, sometimes it can be really expensive depending on where you go to get it, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, yeah. I know, like, in the last group I was a part of, they Bison. hit home the point that you should pretty much not get meat from just anywhere because of cross-contamination and stuff like that. So I try to go to places that, you know, don't serve pig and all that stuff or whatever. So sometimes it can get pretty, pretty expensive. Like, maybe like five to seven packets of meat can be like in the hundreds already you know and it's not a lot of meat so well cross contamination only happens bro if you're going to fast food or you're going to a sub shop or whatever there's no cross contamination when it's packaged that, well like um that, basically what they would teach us is like um well what what they would pretty much say in the group is like if you go to walmart and you go to um get like because what I used to do when I was in the world before, or when I was like really early in this park before they told me this stuff is um, I would go to Walmart and I would get like this bag of chicken. It was like, I think 20 pounds of chicken or 10 pounds of chicken for $20. And it was good. It would hold me over. But after they said that, um, I couldn't really do that anymore because I didn't know. So I went to yeah. go get kosher meat pretty much. And like kosher meat can get really expensive really quickly. It depends where you go, though, because where we go, we can get kosher, like, that has a kosher symbol on it, and it's not that expensive. Yes, um, you know, or... No, he's not even talking about grass meat. He's just talking about what a kosher symbol Oh, okay. Is. So, like, you could get, like, um, Purdue. Purdue is kosher. So, I mean, there uh, you can get cheap type of meat that you can consume – um, but as far as the cross contamination, I can assure you that there's no proven information that packaged meat is cross contaminated. There's no facts to that. That's an assumption. That's a, a rumor at best. There's no there's no fact to that. Um, each type of meat is separately packaged, doesn't touch one another. So either I, I'm not trying to pick on people, but what it's what it's sounding like whoever told you that has a very 
lack of a uh, uh, bad understanding of what cross-contamination, the definition of cross-contamination is. Cross-contamination is when you get germs from one meat on a utensil and it contaminates the other meat. That's cross-contamination. If I separately, just I'm just using logic, logic here. If you, if you take a meat, right, a specific type of animal, it's meat, you package in one separate package, then you wash your hands and you package the other package, there's no cross-contamination. And I know that for a fact, I've worked at 7-Elevens that protect against cross-contamination. I've worked at other places. Um, it, it, you're talking about almost a 0% chance of cross-contamination if you're getting packaged meat. So uh, I don't think there's anything to worry about in my opinion. I think that's going a little overboard in my opinion. Um, but that's, that's the actual physical definition of cross-contamination if you look it up online. It means that you're, you're basically one meat is touching the other or germs from the meat is touching another meat. Right. That's the literal definition of cross-contamination. So, you know, I seriously doubt, bro, you have to go to a kosher deli just to get meat. I think they, that's um, they would say like, okay, like the butcher would probably cut the pork and then the, the, then the butcher would use the same knife to cut the chicken. I remember my mom used to be a butcher, and I remember I told her that's why I can't really eat nor like meat from what, wherever. And she was like, "Oh yeah, that's true." I guess so I was like, "Oh okay." But, but again, their ground beef—they're not cutting anything. Ground beef's ground beef. Ground beef's not touching pork. So again, they—they have a lack of understanding. Is what I'm trying to tell you. They have a physical lack of understanding. You know what? <laughs> Brother, you can get um, some good meat that's kosher. And the, the meat is on sale, like we have here, like three ninety nine a pound for chuck steak or for dry chips. Sometimes you get, I don't know what it's like now. I haven't gone shopping in almost eight months to really realize the prices. Uh, um, but you yeah. can ask the picture, ground it, and you're saving money there because they won't grind it, and the and the grinding machines always got to be clean. So yeah. they they clean it, and then um, uh, uh, you have good decent meat ground into ground beef, and um, you're saving because I don't know why ground beef is better than a roast per pound. But yeah. I just get your butcher to grind it up and, and you'll be having some nice hamburger patties there. And yeah. Some yeah. And all that good stuff. You know, and I did hear a study about three years ago, four years ago, I don't remember how long ago it was, but uh, soy for men causes prostate cancer you have to be very careful yeah. it's not made so yeah you men have to be careful yeah yeah, yeah. i don't I, I don't touch it as as much as i can you know if i have a you know like a soup that well i used to i, I really haven't done a lot of stuff anymore but you know how they give you a little soup before you get your Chinese food, yeah, um, they would have little chunks of, uh, you know, soy in it. You just don't, just don't eat it. You just don't know where it's coming from. I don't know. I, I, I don't just don't trust a lot of stuff. Anymore. Yeah, you don't know their cleaning habits. Yeah, you know, but you know what? Okay, when you go to the store and you go buy these plastic cutting boards. They have one that's vegetables, yeah. fish, meat, chicken, and just proper. So they know about going cross Oh, sit your, uh, go to closer us. to your phone. Oh, okay. It's, it's up to us to, uh, you know, check what we're eating. <coughs> or they're cutting their food. So what knives they're using. Yeah, since you sound oh. far away, what happened? Okay, it's my phone. I don't know, it's crazy. All right, I'm not going to talk this. I don't know how to fix it. But just be careful. 
Yeah, we could talk more about this off the record. I don't want this recording going too oh, long yeah. <laughs> off topic. So, um, yeah, well, I think we're going to end the recording now, guys. Um, and uh, we'll talk more about this off topic. I would like to do a future study about food and stuff. Oh, that would and be good, yeah. Casting off a lot of heavy yokes that we have because of assumptions True. or True. misinformation. <laughs> Um, you know, so, um, but anyway, I just want to thank everyone for joining us today for any guests that have joined, um, any people viewing and listening, please stay tuned next week. You who are willing, we'll be, uh, going into our next half tour reading and, uh, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. That would be a good study. You know, we could go into like lunch meetings.